Oh boy, you guys had a lot of questions about these ones. We're gonna talk about them today. Well, hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave from Chase the Summit. And today we're gonna be talking about the new Garmin Foreigner 955 and the Garmin Foreigner 255. I released videos about these last week and I've gotten a few hundred comments on those videos asking a ton of questions about these. So in this video, I'm going to be taking some of those questions in answering them. And uh, I hope you find the answers useful because they're just my answers. I'm not a Garmin representative. I don't work for Garmin but I'll do my best. Before we dive into all these questions, I do wanna thank the sponsor of this video, and that is playbetter.com. Playbetter.com is a Garmin authorized reseller, but they also sell all of the major fitness watch brands out there from Garmin, Kuros, Polar, and more. Not only that, they offer free two day shipping and a no hassle 60 day long return policy. So if you change your mind almost two months later, you can still send it back and get a refund, which is pretty awesome. And for viewers of my channel, if you decide to pick up your new watch from Playbetter, you can actually get a free holographic Chase the Summit sticker by using code CTS at checkout, which is pretty cool. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so the first question I want to address in this video is something I got a lot of questions about, and it's about the Fortner 255 in its built-in barometric altimeter. Now keep in mind, I received this device several weeks before it was announced to the public and it was on pre-release firmware. It was not finalized firmware. And not only did I have pre-release firmware, I also had documentation from Garmin that stated that the Forerunner 255 did not have a barometric altimeter, which was very confusing. And it seemed especially weird because when I flipped the watch over, I did see this little tiny hole underneath the watch, which did indicate that it did have a port for some kind of sensor. And I did assume it was a barometric altimeter, but it couldn't be because the documentation said it wasn't. In either case, to clear the air on the 255, it does have a barometric altimeter. So it will record your elevation data when you're out on an activity. It will display it in real time during your activity in a data Field. And as you can see here, if I scroll on my widgets here, you can see the ABC widget here. And if I click into that and scroll down, I've got my current elevation at 222 feet and the barometric altimeter below that. Okay, the next question I want to address is something I saw a lot in the 400 255 video comments and then the 955 video comments. And that's talking about older hardware and firmware updates to these new features. So if you weren't paying attention, the Garmin 400 255 and 955 got a whole bunch of new features, something called training readiness, HRV status, and some new updated features that are not available on some of the other models, including the Garmin Epix Gen 2, which is a much more expensive watch, and the Garmin Phoenix 7X, which again, is a very expensive watch. Now, I don't have official word from Garmin what watches will or will not get updates to reflect these new features. I'm going to purely speculate in this video. So take that for what it's worth. This is entirely a guess. If we look at Garmin's history, they always update recent generation devices with new features. So if you see a new feature rollout on a Garmin Foreigner 955, odds are you're gonna see it on your Garmin Phoenix 7 pretty soon. So I can say with like 99% confidence that the Garmin Phoenix 7X, the Garmin Phoenix 7, the 7 S, the Epix Gen 2, are all going to receive all of these new firmware updates. Now where the firmware updates fall into kind of a gray area would be something like the Garmin Foreigner 945 and 945 LTE, because they're in the same generation, but the 945 LTE is still a current model, while the 945 is one generation behind. The 945 will not get all these new features. It might get like the HRV status update or something, like one feature might trickle back, but it's not gonna get everything where I think the Garmin 945 LTE will get all these new things, but time will tell. Another gray area is going to be the Garmin Instinct 2 because this device just came out a few months ago and it does not have the HRV status update. It does not have the new training status or anything like that. And I'm curious to see if this will also get a firmware update to reflect these new features. But the weird thing about the Instinct 2 is that it's actually an outdoor watch. It's not really a training watch or a training tool. So I'm not sure if it will make that leap. Again, it's really a guess for me. I'd say the Instinct 2 is probably 50-50 whether or not it gets this new stuff. And now let's address the elephant in the room and probably the most popular comment on all these videos is going to be the Garmin Phoenix 6. Will that get all these new updates? Sadly, I don't think it will. 
because the Garmin Phoenix 6 is again one generation behind. You've got the Phoenix 7 that came out in January, and now the Phoenix 6 is three years old. In the world of tech, it's a pretty old device. But what I'm curious about is if there is actually a reason why they couldn't port it back. Like, is the old heart rate sensor on the Garmin Phoenix 6 not good enough to support these new features like the HRV status? Maybe, maybe not. I think Garmin would say it's not because they need a reason not to roll it back. But again, I'm guessing here. Now keep in mind with the release of the 955 and 255, it doesn't make your Phoenix 6 old or any worse. And it doesn't mean that Garmin is gonna drop you and not allow you to upload your runs to Garmin Connect or to Strava or anything like that. Your watch still works and it will continue to work indefinitely. It's just a matter of getting these new features and sadly I don't think they're gonna roll them back. Okay that's kind of the end of my rant on firmware updates. Let's move on to something else like running power. So on the Garmin Foreigner 955 and 255 Garmin announced native running power which means you can collect running power data right to the watch with no additional apps or data fields or anything which is great a question i got in the comments a lot was whether or not this new native running power support would work with the stride pod now if you don't know what the stride pod is it's a little sensor you attach to your shoe and it can actually record running power data to your garmin watch to your phone to your apple watch any device really as long as you're using the stride app now a lot of people don't want to use the stride app they want to use the the Garmin watch as it is with native running power support. Unfortunately, I tried pairing the stride pod to both the 255 and 955 and it does not record running power data directly to the watch without installing the third party stride data field. So no, it doesn't work with the stride pod. You still need to download the stride data field and that does work, but there's an additional step there. If you want to record running power data on the 255 or 955, you need the running dynamics pod from Garmin or the Garmin HRM Pro, which is a chest, chest heart rate sensor. Both of those work with this, stride pod does not. Jumping right into the next question is about the Garmin 955 and why why didn't get the LTE function we saw on the 945 LTE? And this is a weird one. I really honestly expected to see a version of the 955 with LTE come as an option. Maybe not all of them had LTE, but maybe there would be like a 955 and then you click a little box and have LTE. That didn't happen. So I'm purely speculating here, but I think the reason for this is because Garmin didn't actually sell as many 945 LTEs when that was announced as they had hoped. So I'm wondering if Garmin is actually behind the scenes developing a more robust or feature rich LTE function that can be on a future 955, maybe a 955 LTE that's released down the road. Okay, the final topic I wanna to discuss in this video is a comparison that I saw a lot of on the 255 video in the comments, and that is the Garmin Foreigner 745. A lot of people have been wondering with the 255 getting all these new features, having the built-in altimeter on board, a larger battery and better battery life and all these new things, does it make sense to even buy a Foreigner 745 anymore? Is there any advantage to the Foreigner 745? And in my opinion, no. <laughs> the Garmin Foreigner 745 is still a really good watch and it does have a couple of features that the 255 does not have. The 745 also has Climb Pro on board, which shows your climbs and descents in real time when you're out on an activity, which is a really cool feature. The Garmin Foreigner 255 has way more to offer with dual frequency GPS, a better heart rate sensor, longer battery life, two size options, and a whole bunch of software on board that I don't think the 745 is gonna get. And I'm honestly wondering in the future if they're even going to update the 745 with the gap between the 255 and the 955 being so narrow now, I don't really know what the 755 of the future could offer. All right, friends, we've reached the end of this video and I hope you found it helpful. I really just wanted to answer some of the questions I saw a lot of because it's hard to respond to all of them by typing them out. And hopefully if you had a question, this answered it for you. If it did and you found this video valuable in any way, I really appreciate it if you could hit that thumbs up and subscribe button down below so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. I'm gonna have a lot more follow-up videos about these two watches in the future, comparing them to other devices. So make sure you stick around for that. And again, if you are interested in picking up a 255 or 955 or any other watch I showed off in this video, make sure you to check out the links in the description down below because they do help support this channel and they cost nothing extra to you. All right, that's the end of this video. I gotta stop talking now hopefully I answered your question and if I didn't make sure to comment it down below and I'll try to answer it in the comments of this video hopefully okay gotta go now bye, bye.